pack. I don't know if I'm gonna call this a pack review, maybe like pack assessment might be a better thing to call it. So I'm gonna compare three packs. First one is the Pinnacle Pack from Barney's Sports Chalet. Um, Bob Hodson, I believe his dad started the business and then Bob took it over. And then now more recently, a uh, young fella by the name of Kevin Dana, who I believe he used to guide. I've met him a couple of times, don't know him well by any stretch, but seems like a nice guy. And they've always got top shelf equipment in their store there in Anchorage and you can shop online. This is probably not gonna be real familiar to people in the lower 48 but anybody that's done any hunting in Alaska, you're gonna be familiar with this pack. They'll call it a Barney's pack. Um, I believe the Pinnacle is the biggest one they make. They've got uh, two other models, but this is a go-to guide pack, 7,800 cubic inches. Um, I've used this pack. Um, this one's only a year or so old. I actually, uh, I, I had, I've had a couple of them through the years but I've used this pack, this, this system, conservatively, I've used it for well over a thousand days in the field, probably pushing 1,500. Top notch, very durable. Once I had a 10 foot brown bear, I think it was my second year I was guiding or packing in Alaska. I had a 10 foot brown bear in this thing with the skull inside of it. And we were like, almost 3,000 feet in elevation with snowshoes. And I remember we came to a cliff, it was dark. And the guide just told me, just toss that thing over the cliff because there was no way that I was gonna be able to get down there with that heavy pack. I mean, it weighed 180 pounds easy. And so I just took off the pack and threw it over the cliff, probably like 200 feet, went back down there, a little bit of hide had fallen out, tucked the hide back in and kept on trucking. These things are bulletproof. So the list weight is seven pounds, eight ounces. My scale was, uh, was in the upper nines. Um, I do have a couple of these um, little waist pouches attached to the hip belt. So, I mean, that maybe adds a little bit of weight. Uh, but yeah, this, this is definitely the heavier of the three packs. It comes with a load shelf or you can get it, I think. If you take the, the bag off from the frame, which is simple, is obviously an external frame and then the load shelf attaches, a real simple system. That's ideal for like packing moose quarters, caribou quarters, whatever, just packing meat. But the shoulder straps are super heavy duty, real good amount of cushion. The waist pad and the lumbar um, pad, very comfortable. And I like the, uh, the ratcheting system on the, um, the waist belt, which is getting to be kind of standard on all these high-end packs anymore. But the suspension system is key in that it wraps around to the bottom and so you're actually like lifting, the weight is kind of coming from down kind of by your tailbone rather than just attaching up high to what you're carrying, which makes a huge, huge difference. I hope that makes sense. So this, the, the connection point is actually right down here, way down here, low in the pack. And um, I mean, if, if you're packing, this is the pack you want if you're frequently packing loads of 80 plus pounds, I would say, maybe even 60 for some smaller people and you get old and half crippled like me, yeah, probably closer to 60. But um, every guide's packed out many quarters with this pack. And if you're on a, um, if you're doing a DIY moose hunt, uh, caribou hunt, something like that, this is the pack to have. You know, do you, do you have to have it? No, if you've got other packs, you know, you'll probably get by. But the, uh, the utilitarian nature and design, I think it just has the perfect number of pockets for me as a guide, or, you know, if you're on a, an extended hunt where you're not packing um, a ton of miles, where weight isn't such an issue. I mean, it's got pockets kind of all over the place. I put my spotting scope and my tripod in here. Usually, I think I got a pair of Wiggies waders in here. Um, yeah, and the top lid fits a bunch of stuff. It's just super fast to use. Everything is very functional on this pack. There's not a lot of extras. There's not a lot of garbage that you use. It's got a sleeve down the side that I stuck my stick my trekking poles in when we're down in final stock. And I think perhaps the biggest 
I know this might sound stupid, but one of the biggest reasons why I like this pack, it comes with a, you know, a bar that goes over top, but most everybody takes it off. And then you've got these posts here to hang your rifle off of. That is huge because you can access your rifle so fast when you're in bear country. You just, you know, you just swing it right off and boom, you've got your rifle handy and it basically never falls off. Every once in a while, these will get caught on brush. I'm actually gonna heat this up here and kind of bend them back at like a 30 degree angle so the brush kind of, um, you know, parts away a little bit better. But basically this system that I've got is about 900 bucks. Um, but this thing will last you a lifetime. Resale value is very good. So this pack I think is the ideal pack for a DIY moose or caribou hunter, particularly a young guy that can pack a pretty heavy load. If you're a guide, I use this, I don't personally use it sheep hunting anymore. Um, and one thing I should say to the durability of this, I will bring this up as my check bag when I go to Alaska in and out of airports. Uh, I mean, I must have been on the one pack that I had for about 10, 12 years. I mean, it must have been on at least 20 air, no, it'd be about 40, I guess 20 round trip trips. Uh, so yeah, probably 30 to 40 airline flights, um, in and out of bush villages, super cubs, you name it. And I, I don't think I ever, I maybe stitched that thing up probably with some dental floss uh, one time, but they are rugged, they are tough. Um, I, I use it, I use this pack for bear guiding and moose guiding, um, not for sheep anymore. But if you're a packer going to Alaska, you need this pack. And anything where you know you're, you're packing, you know, heavy loads, um, this is it. This is the one to get, no doubt about it. So next, uh, we will talk about the, this one is a Kuyu pack here. Um, this is the Pro 7800. And you don't need the Pinnacle pack. I mean, if you're a, if you're a DIY guy and you're going caribou or moose or something like that, you could probably step it down, but it's not a whole lot of extra weight and I kind of like having that bulk. And generally you're going, particularly on an Alaskan hunt, um, get the next size bigger than you think you need because a lot of times you need puffy, bulky stuff uh, more, than, more than you realize. And now, particularly when you get into packs like this here, um, here's my cork ball that I used to roll the fascia on my feet and my back if I ever got a knot on it. Um, but particularly these packs, they, they compress down, they get pretty streamlined. So if in doubt, I would suggest going a size bigger if you're in doubt when you're selecting the size. So this is the Kuyu Pro 7800, 700 70 hundred, uh, cubic inches. The list weight on this is uh, 6.1 ounces. I was getting about seven pounds on my scale. Um, Brendan Burns, I don't know what he is, CFO, CEO, I don't know, he's got some, some title. Uh, but he's a pretty hardcore hunter, and uh, um, when he, when I, when I approached him uh, about, uh, and I've, I've known Brandon for a fair while, a little bit, but uh, when we first started talking about working together, he just said, "Hey, you just uh, use our stuff, and you know, you do Billy Moles, and let us know what you think." And uh, I really appreciated that. You know, he never, never once asked me to do anything I wasn't comfortable. He said, "Hey." You, you got you just try it and you like the products then you know then just let people know and uh, yeah they've been really great to work with so this pack I've got about 200 days of use uh, on it I've used it bear hunting moose hunting sheep hunting um, and now this is kind of anymore this is at this point what I've used it for is basically sheep hunting the odd caribou grizzly bear hunt if I'm moose hunting or brown bear hunting, I use that Barney's pack. What I like about this pack is it's, um, you know, it's not as heavy duty, um, you know, it doesn't have the thick heavy shoulder straps like the Barney's, but it's definitely durable. I like that it has metal buckles, a couple places there's metal buckles, which, you know, probably weigh a little bit more than the plastic, but they're strong. Um, it's very simple to change out the bags with the same frame. Very simple. I've got a, a 3,000 cubic inch bag as well that I'll use around home or if I'm just kind of training, carrying a pack around. Um, 
and the pack the pockets and compartments in it i mean i'm not going to go through all of it but i mean there's a lot of them and they just seem like they're well thought out and i'm kind of a minimalist generally with a lot of these things like it seems like a lot of things are over engineered and they're designed they put a bunch of junk on them for looks rather than function but the more i use this pack the more i find that i like it and one thing i will say about kuyu gear is it it just seems to go beyond um, other brands that i've used and how they um coordinate and they they work together um yeah i i've, I've been really I've been using Kuyu gear now three or four years, and I've just really been impressed with the quality of everything that they make. Um, yeah, it, it's all pretty simple. Um, they have their own rifle strap system, which I have used, which works okay, um, but nothing as good as that Barney's, uh, Barney's system. So this this setup's a little bit under 800 bucks if you get the extra things here around the waistband uh, yeah you're going to be looking at about 600 bucks um but yeah i've packed you know 100 pound loads on this thing and, and it handles them no problem um yeah i i just i think it, i think it's a great pack what i think this would be ideal for is probably for a younger hunter who's probably doing some of his own extended backpack hunts. Um, if you're doing a wide variety of hunts, it'd probably be kind of ideal. Um, particularly in the lid. That's the one thing I like. It's got separate compartments in the lid. Yeah, it just seemed to me as a guide, I need a lot of different things, you know, particularly like, um, when we're spiking out and I've got camping equipment and stoves and, and this and that. For me, it was just really easy to organize with this thing. So I would say this is just a good all around. If you're doing a wide range of stuff, if you think you, if you need a frame at all, um, I mean, you could be using this for a whitetail woods. If you're doing kind of late season, cold weather hunting, you know, I, I just, I'd just say this is a good all-around pack. Uh, next is Stone Glacier. So, and another guy, uh, Kurt Roscoe, the founder, and I think he's kind of the, the lead um, technician or engineer. I really like that guy. He is, he's just a good dude. Uh, he's just no-nonsense, humble guy, and um, he sent me a pack long ago when he was first starting out and I was kind of first starting out. He was first starting out in the pack business, let me be clear. Um, Cause yeah, he's a pretty hardcore hunter in his own right. So Kurt built this pack. I don't know, I'm not quoting Kurt, but I think it's pretty safe to say. I mean, it's built as a minimalist pack. So there's not as many bells and whistles on this, not as many compartments which obviously helps to stay lightweight. The list price on this, or the list weight, was six pounds, one ounce, uh, the same as the Kuyu pack, um, but I, I was coming up about 10 ounces lighter um, with this pack than I was compared to the Kuyu pack. So it appears to me that this is a little bit lighter, and this is the Sky Guide 7900. So if you're a, uh, a client for an Alaskan hunt, I would say probably no matter what you're hunting, if you're you, you're going to want somewhere between 4,500 cubic inches and 6,000. You know, unless you're you know tougher and twisted cougar crap, and you want to pack heavy loads, then get a 79 or a 78 or something. But even if it's like a caribou or a moose hunt, a lot of times you're going to be hiking to a glassing knob and sitting all day. You know, you you hike over there a quarter mile, half up mile. Oh, we got some deer out there but you're going to you're going to like having that that bigger bag or let's say you shoot something maybe you're you're going to take some of your guide's duffel or something like that he's going to pack a load of meat so again if in doubt go a little bit bigger but generally i find 4500 to 5500 is kind of the sweet spot 4000 would be a minimum 6000 wouldn't be a problem uh, but if you're a young buck and uh, you know you don't mind packing weight you know 7000 is probably just fine the load shelf system on this is pretty cool. I won't take it off, 
but it's pretty simple to use. <coughs> the stone glacier packs, I would say, are a little bit more complex and kind of complicated to figure out. The Kuyu packs seem very, I don't know if intuitive is the right word, but they're easy to kind of figure out. It takes a little bit less time. I'm not a gear gadget guy like in the off season when I get done hunting I throw my stuff away and I don't look at it again until the next time it's ready to go hunting you know and then I fix things and I'm up till one in the morning getting stuff ready to go hunting again um, Stone Glacier has their own rifle sling you know I'm always hunting in grizzly bear country so rifles got to be ready actually Kurt helped me design this on my first pack this is the X curve frame that I've got um, but on the original one, Kurt actually came up with this design. We just made a, a sleeve and then we put a, a carbon arrow shaft here. This one I, is homemade. I probably should have it a little bit longer. I actually was crossing a creek. This is another story, uh, a video that will be coming out with soon. And It was high water, long story short, my rifle ended up slipping. I fell into this deep hole and I went like neck deep into the water. My rifle slipped off this post and I didn't even realize it. Either my sling broke on my rifle or the, the rifle just fell, went right down my arm when I fell into the water and I came up and it, it wasn't until like, oh, about a half hour later when we were like 80 yards from a grizzly bear and I went to grab my rifle that it wasn't there. Um, but that's, that's neither here nor there, I guess, but kind of a neat story about, about this system. Up until then, it'd been, it, it, it always worked. But, um, a little bit thinner on, definitely thinner on the uh, shoulder straps than the uh, Barney's pack, um, but all around a great pack. I have broke a couple of plastic buckles, but they give repair kits for it. This is basically a minimalist system, and, and the load shelf does work well for packing meat, so there is that. Um, for me, there's just a little bit too few of pockets for guiding. I would say this is a great um, pack for clients that aren't packing super heavy loads. And it's just not quite enough support for me. I had a back injury a bunch of years ago that I'm still dealing with. And just not quite enough support for me with loads over like 60, 80 pounds. I have packed over 100 pounds with it. It can certainly do it. I would say this pack is the least obtrusive of these three. It seems to move with your body pretty well and maybe that's kind of an exchange for the maybe a little bit less stiffness, stability, and support in the frame. I would say this is the perfect pack for the guy that's going in super light for day hunts who wants the ability to come out heavy with an animal. I would say this is ideal. And again, for an older client that wants the ability to pack big loads but doesn't, you know, wants to keep it as light as possible, I think this is a, a great pack. Again, 40, 7,900 is more than you need. 4,500 to 5,500 is great. Takes a little bit more time to adjust and deal with, I find, than these other packs. Um, and, and to recap, I, I've used this Stone Glacier pack better than 300 days in the field, probably less than 400. Um, but all three, I, I mean, I would say this is probably a little bit more complex. This is mid-range as far as ease of use. This is the simplest, hardcore, heavy duty. This is right in the middle, and this one's a little bit simpler. All three, I've used them a lot, a, a minimum of a couple hundred days, but I would say they're all top quality. I kind of hope that helps you understanding some of the pros and cons and the uh, best application for both packs. Um, yeah, maybe leave any uh, questions, comments, concerns, and other videos this winter. I plan on going through all uh, facets of gear that I use and try to help people make decisions. Um, I'm not a tech guy. Basically, you know, 90% of what I'm saying is just stuff that I've just kind of figured out on my own. So uh, hopefully it's not uh, that there's some information here that you're not getting elsewhere is kind of my hope. So I uh, appreciate you watching. Hope that helped you out. But uh, I I'd say... Pick whichever one works best for your best use, and I don't think you'd be disappointed in any of them. Thanks so much.